So there is a group of people they call the Kalamas during the time of the Buddha. So these are simple people who actually look forward to receiving teachers and learn from them the truth. Then one day, the Buddha also passed by there. Then one of the Kalamas asked the Buddha, he said, Venerable, there is a lot of, there are a lot of teachers that come and they claim that their teaching is the best, yeah, is the only truth or whatever. Yeah. Then how can we know or how do we charge based on our limited understanding? So the Buddha happily answered the Kalamas. He said, listen, O Kalamas, he said, whatever teacher that come by and tell you whatever teaching is the truth or what. Yeah. He said, the first thing is don't believe. He said, even I come and tell you anything, don't believe, he said. And even they tell you which holy book say what which holy book. He said, no need to believe. What is more important is, this, he said, you ask yourself two questions, he said. So what are the two questions? He said, whatever they teach you, ask you to do, ask yourself, does it harm you by doing it? Or does it harm others? If it doesn't harm you and harm others, by all means, no harm cultivating him. Like if he advised you to keep your precept, not to kill and all those things, no harm. Can abide by it. But if there's anything that asks you to violate the basic five precepts, then you have to ask yourself. There is karmic implication. You read what you saw, do good because good, do evil because evil. Your life, you decide, is that what you want? If by doing it, it causes you harm, means coming implication, hurt you, hurt others, then avoid doing it. Then the teaching just actually end there. But later on, after I developed the mindfulness, I realized we should apply this Kalama Sutta to our own thought also. Yeah. Sometimes our thought, before you become enlightened. It's full of selfishness and delusion. And if you don't question the thought, yeah, it can take you to Holland and create a lot of coming down forward or coming negativity. Because before you become enlightened, before you have the Dhamma, a lot of our thoughts are full of selfish intent, full of is what they call emotional negativity, especially envy, jealousy, uh, likes and dislikes. Uh, then a lot of what they call craving, desire for power and all those things. So once that thought arises, yeah, like it tells you, this guy, he hurt you before. Uh, don't trust him. Uh, he deceived you before. Don't trust him. Then normally, as a normal human being, we tend to listen to the thought, yeah, la, last time this guy did that to me. So you develop what? You develop enmity towards that person. And so you start to dislike that person. Then you perceive him with negativity. Uh, then the ill will, the anger, the delusion continue to unfold and manifest in you. That's how you get into trouble. Because no matter how bad that person is, he's just the way he is. We are comically is like that. Condition like that, things will really like that. Deluded people do deluded things. Selfish people do selfish things. Angry people do angry things. They are just the way they are. So accept them for what they are. So do not create any unnecessary negativity. So don't listen to your thought. Just tell yourself, enough, you have deceived me long enough. You develop all the wrong view for me to create the, what they call reaction of mind, stirring of mind, the duality that 
trap me, entangle me in life. So now, I want to reverse all this through an understanding. I want to investigate into it. I will develop mindfulness to be mindful and aware of what is going on. Then I straighten my view to free myself from all this entanglement. Then when you develop that understanding and un uh, awakening, you realize all these are wrong thoughts. What are wrong thought? Thought that condition your fear, your worry, your anxiety, your sorrow, your lamentation, your misery, your unhappiness, your insecurity. All these are wrong thought. Then why do you hold on to it, cling on to it? Because we lack understanding. We lack the Dhamma understanding. And all these Wrong thought are the thought with the three evil roots of greed, hatred, and delusion within their content. Whereas right thought are beautiful, virtuous, good thought that is free of the evil roots of greed, hatred, and delusion. That's why in the Noble Eightfold Path teaching, the fourth noble truth, the Buddha said, if you cultivate this Noble Eightfold Path based on right view, giving rise to right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, and the four right effort, etc. Then you will be following the correct path, acting according to Dhamma understanding, which is the Dhamma way to free yourself. So Noble Eightfold Path is the path that will lead to the end of all suffering. That's why the Buddha said, if you cultivate this noble eightfold power, it will lead to the end of all suffering. And these are right view leading to right thought, right speech, right action. That's why everything is right, perfect, no evil, no greed, no hatred, no delusion, no evil roots. It cannot create karmic negativity. This is how we cultivate and act. So when we have the understanding of what constitutes evil and we are mindful, then we can be mindful of the mental intention within every action, speech, and thought process that we carry. That's how we cultivate the advice of the Buddha. We are avoiding all evil through cultivating mindfulness to have the awareness to avoid all evil. When we understand what constitutes evil and we are mindful, then we can deal with it. The five ways to overcome unwholesome thought, uh, as taught uh, by the Buddha in the teaching, they are all in this Asutta book. Later on, we will be covering them as we move on. So today, I just summarize it. <laughs> okay, I think uh, with the explanation of the Kalama Sutta, so now you know uh, the two questions. If I follow, does it harm me, hurt me? If I follow, does it harm others? Yeah. If it doesn't, then no harm. Yeah. It is something that you can investigate into it and put it into practice. Yeah. But if you detect any evil roots behind the thing that they advise you to do, miss, when you perform those actions, can be action, speech, or thought process, it gives rise to negativity because the evil roots are there. Then it will harm you and harm others. So that is not something you should follow. You should avoid. So even your thought tell you, sometimes selfish thought, they can come in the form of this guy, you know. Don't worry, la, small thing, this one. Everybody do what. Uh, and especially they work for the government. Uh. They say all these things belong to government, or uh, common. Uh can take on, don't worry. Nobody knows. Huh? So you listen to the thought that way, you get yourself into trouble. Because the evil intent is already negative, full of delusion, selfishness, uh, evil intent. So whatever you do, it will come back to you. Do good because good, do evil because evil. So not worthwhile. Okay? <laughs>